I did an expedition in right before Lex came. I did an expedition in March, and me and JJ went to the back. We basically picked a part of the Amazon that we'd never been to and went, let's go see what's over there. And it took us. You just a, picked a spot. We picked a spot because it was around in a place that, like, on the map, there's there's no there's no towns, there's no nothing. So we said, let's go there. And it took us a week. We had to take a commercial flight to a smaller flight to a smaller flight, and then we had to take a boat for three days, nine hours a day, to get to the start of the expedition. Now, when you do that, do you check to see if there's uncontacted tribes that have been reported in those areas? We, what you do is you get to the last town. <laughs> And you go, <laughs> you wait. what's that way? And they tell you. And the scariest thing, and this was one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life, was that there were these tiny little people there. And they were, so there was like normal Peruvians walking around, like loggers, gold miners. They're, they're you know, they're, they're, they're chainsaws. There's people who had gasoline barges. There's also prostitute boats that drive around, like brothels that go On up and down. On a boat? Yeah. The, and, and, you, <laughs> and you can pay them in wood, surprisingly enough. Board feet of timber, no joke. Um, Whoa. Yes, yeah, so you get to the real, like, this is a place where, like, you feel like you went in a time machine. And you get out there, and there's people with modern machines, but then off in the corner, there were these little people, and they were still holding on to their bows and arrows. And you look at them, and as soon as you look at them, they hide. And we were like, who are they? And they are like, those are the Nawa. And we were like, what's going on with the Nawa? And it turns out that the Nawa were shooting at the oil company guys that were trying to get into this deep, again, a part of the forest that never has been accessed before. Now it's starting, people are reaching deeper into the Amazon. And the problem is they'd be going up this river and there'd be arrows flying by them. Oh my God. So how'd they solve that problem? They funded the missionaries, sent the missionaries out there to talk to the Nawa and convince them to come back to the nearest town. So these are uncontacted tribes who are right there. Like we're standing there like kind of talking to them we're like hola and they're how do the missionaries communicate with them the missionaries go like you know bible up and they just hope <laughs> and they just you know are these the mormons like what groups i actually don't know mormons I, love I, to do that i don't know what group it was i know i saw i saw the missionary and he gave me a dirty evil look and walked away like this is dark just the dark they gave you an evil look oh no, no no these are not people that are okay and so these terrified think about this for a second these, so these, what are the missionaries up to they're working for the oil companies. They're clearing out the forest. They're clearing the way. They're just doing it peacefully. But so, are they actual missionaries or are they acting as missionaries? Whatever it is, they're, they're going with the missionary protocol, getting these people to come in. So what they did was through two translators from Spanish to some, to, to Yine, to Nawa, to something, we asked this guy and we had to stay away because we didn't want to get them sick. And we had to say like, what are you doing here? And the guy was like, I'm trying to go back to my house, like where I live in my house, my jungle. And he said, these missionaries said, if I came here, that then we, they'd help me in the food. And, you know. and they were very confused because the missionaries had brought back a boatload of them and kind of tricked them. Because then when they got to the town, they just showed up to capitalist society, which even though it's super remote, they're like, you want food? Whoa. You got to buy it. And these people have a bow and arrow, but there's no more animals around because oh they've killed everything. God. And they go, but I want to go home. And the missionaries go, well, do you got gasoline? Now they're stuck. Oh, my God. And how far? Like three days of driving in a boat, so like 70 miles by river. Oh, my God. And so these poor people are coming into modern society a thousand years late with their wooden bow and arrows. They're this big. They're tiny little people, and they're terrified, and no one's helping them. Oh, my God. And it's the edge of the world, and it's exactly when I was, and I was reading this Comanche book on that expedition, and I'm going, this is the same thing. It's that manifest destiny. Mm. This is the end of their culture. There's oh. no one. There's no one who's going to help them. And they were just terrified sitting there at the edges of the streets. And all these people are riding by on like motorcycles and rickshaws. And this boat's going by. And these people are trying to look for like a rat to shoot. Oh, my God. It was terrifying. Oh, my God. It was terrifying. I felt so bad for them because they had no idea. You could see they had no idea. And they don't even speak the language. They don't even speak. They're two degrees separated with language. So like like you could speak Yine, which is the local tribal language there. But these people don't even speak that. They speak their language. So you'd have to go from Spanish to Yine to Nawa. Oh, my God. And we were there, and these people were going. So how does someone know Nawa that you talk to? Because one of the Yine guys that I knew was had been living there so he'd picked up a few Nawa words and so oh. they, were, they were they were they were going so So these really, people how long have these people been there for? I didn't get that but they were they were they were literally living in a camp 
at the like where the trees were. They stayed by the trees. They wanted to be by the trees. Oh my god! And so there's people like you could buy a Coca Cola there. Like this was like you could you know you could buy gasoline, Coca Cola, whatever. Um, way out there, there's a boat that has some like gasoline cylinders. You can fill up your boat, and then this this is where this is the launch. It's like it, it, during the gold rush in Alaska. It's like the last place before you go into the wild. Oh my god. And these, it was just, it was really horrible to see. And I think reading that the uh, Empire of the Summer Moon was made it even worse because that's so dirty. So yeah. they tricked these people into going to the town, and they just abandoned them. Yeah. Oh my God. And these people, how could they know that someone would do that to them? They, they don't even no know what idea. a town is like. Right? They don't. They don't even know what a town is. Oh like. my they're terrified. God. And so they're still, you know, you see them. They're they're washing by the river, and they're trying to feed their babies, but they're and probably starving no one gives a fuck. And no one gives a fuck. And they're oh treated like God. dirt too, because people, because humans are humans, and so right. Um, no one wants to help them. Nobody could talk to them. And then of course they're they're kind of frustrated, right? Right. So like they're not exactly friendly either. Right. Um, wow. So yeah, crazy, 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 crazy.